What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Bible Stories with Ben. I'm Ben. Um, today we're going to be walking through the story of Abraham and Isaac. Really cool story from the Bible, one that people um, actually reference a lot when they uh, criticize Christianity because they'll say like, oh, Abraham killed his son. How could a loving God allow that to happen? Well, we're actually going to read today that Abraham didn't kill his son, so let's get into it. Um, today, allow me to introduce to you a new Bible character, Abraham. Now, uh, this is a little bit, this is a few generations after the flood that we talked about last week. Uh, remember how God had chosen to wipe out humanity because they got him so evil and kind of restart with Noah? Well, a few generations go by, they've all gone evil again because we're human, we make stupid mistakes. And uh, Abraham now is the only like loving, God-loving, God-fearing guy that God can find. And God decides, you know, this Abraham guy, he loves me, he's really cool. I'm gonna make the savior of humanity, Jesus, come through this guy's line. So this is the kind of the beginning of where we see God first promise Jesus uh, to Abraham. And, um, and this is also the start of, of uh, the Jewish people in general, Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, whatever, whatever you want to call them. They start with Abraham. He's, he's the first. And Abraham is a good guy. Not perfect. He has some he has some poor moments. He has two kids. The first kid he has, not with his wife. Um, she tells him, hey, I think I'm too old to have a kid. We've got this servant girl. Uh, you know what? Go ahead, have a kid with her. So he does. Not a good decision. Um, that, that ends with a whole bunch of conflict between the servant girl and his wife and him to where she and her son Ishmael actually have to run away. And uh, Ishmael and his, and his mom live in the wilderness. God is still with them, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Bible says that God still loves Ishmael and still goes with him. Um, and Ishmael actually is the uh, father of another people group. Um, the other people living in the Middle East, the Islam and Arabic nations there. So that's, uh, that's Ishmael, Abraham's first son. Then he has another son by his actual wife, Isaac. And that's what we're gonna read about today. Um, God tells Abraham, hey, I want you to take Isaac and uh, I have some instructions for you. So we're gonna open up our Bibles to Genesis chapter 22, verse one through two. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. That's how God sounds. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Um, God calls Isaac his only son for two reasons. One. Abraham had kind of disowned Ishmael at this point, and it's not a good thing, it's a sad thing. Um, and God, and like I said, God still loves Ishmael. We can read about that in Genesis chapter 21, verse 20. And I think the other reason God calls him his only son is God is creating this really cool parallel um, with this story that we're gonna talk about a little later. Let's keep reading, verse three through eight. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there and then we'll come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Abraham must be freaking out at this point, right? Such like an inner struggle, because he really believes at this moment that he's about to kill his son. God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. God himself will provide the lamb for offering. Foreshadowing right there. Then we keep reading 9 through 14. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. 
and Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from, ev from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. God was creating an illustration of what he would do with Jesus. And here's why I think that. Number one, God calls Isaac Abraham's only son, even though he isn't. And I think that he's creating that parallel because Jesus is God's only son. Number two, Isaac carries the, his own wood, like his own instrument of sacrifice up the mountain with him, just like Jesus would later carry up his own cross to where he would be crucified. And then verse 14, I think the most compelling reason um, this is called the place where the Lord will provide on the mountain it will be provided. This is quite possibly the same place where Jesus was crucified. And at the very least, it was very close and in the same general area. So with all of that, I think that is ultimately the purpose of this. God's not, you know, some just angry person trying to get Isaac to sacrifice his son. No, I mean, first of all, this was a... Uh, this was a powerful moment in which Abraham showed God just how much he loved him, how much he would give for him, and that he has that ultimate trust with God, that God would ultimately like have this work out. Maybe Abraham was even thinking, shoot, if I sacrifice Isaac, I don't know, maybe God could even bring him back. Who knows? But this is not a story of God being a jerk. This is actually really cool. This is an illustration and a really cool parallel of what Jesus would ultimately do for us. Thank you guys for watching another Bible Stories with Ben. Tune in next week for another exciting adventure. Peace out.